if your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be, mm -hmm. right? To do that, you have to practice, you have to train, right? You want to train as much as you can, as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11, right? 12, say 12, train at 12, train for two hours, 12 to two. Um, you have to let your body recover. So you eat, recover, whatever. You get back out, you train, start training again at six. Train from six to eight, right? And now you go home, you shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again, right? Those are two sessions, right? Now imagine you wake up at three, you train at four. You go four to six, come home, breakfast, relax, so, so, blah, blah, blah. Now you're back at it again, nine to 11, right? You relax and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, two to four, and now you're back at it again, you know, seven to nine. Look how much more training I have done by simply starting at four, right? And so now you do that and as the years go on, the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. And by year five or six, it doesn't matter how, what kind of work they do in the summer, they're never going to catch up because they're five years behind. <laughs> Right? So it makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work in. I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. If I felt like I left anything on the table, um, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. Right? So the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. Um, and so... Yeah, that's where it comes from for me. You can't leave any stone unturned. Trivial things weren't going to pull my attention. It had to be things weren't going to pull my attention. It had to be things that were, I had a purpose. I wanted to be one of the best basketball players to ever play. And anything else that was outside of that lane, I didn't have time for. At, at what age did that goal become crystal clear? That I, made, I made that deal with myself at 13 years old. At 13 years 13 old? 13 years old. That's you the deal I made. clear about it. Crystal clear. And where did the inspiration come from? Um, the love of the game. The love of the game, the challenge. Like I, I would watch Magic play, I'd watch Michael play, and I would see them do these unbelievable things. And I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but let's find out. If I could work that hard every day, um, with the, being blessed with the physical tools that I have, what would my career be? And I made a promise to myself from that day that I was gonna work that hard every single day so that when I do retire, I have no regrets. And that was the most important thing for me is to leave no stone unturned, get better every single day. And if I lived that way, then over time, you know, I'd have something that was beautiful. But that was my philosophy. It seems like a pretty simple one, but if you live your life to just get better every single day, you do that for 20 years, I mean, what do you have? Follow your passion first. First, 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 first. Um, you know, when I retired from the game, you know, I sat there asking kind of all the wrong questions. You know, what's the biggest industry I can get into? And it's all the wrong stuff. And you got to sit there and ask yourself, okay, what am I truly passionate about? What do I enjoy doing? And when you feel that way, I, honestly, I mean, you feel like you have never worked a day in your life. It's the most fun thing in the world. You get up in the morning excited about what you're doing. And you got to be really honest with yourself about it. If you wake up in the morning and you're dreading going to work, dude, do something else. <laughs> do something else. And those are hard decisions to make. But when you make those decisions, it's a very liberating experience. And you'll find out that the rewards will come. You know, basketball for me was the most important thing. So everything I saw, whether it was TV shows, whether it was books I read, people I talked to, everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything. Everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. The competitiveness that I um, bring to work every day is really helping people, in a sense, be competitive with themselves. Right? If, you're, if you're animating something, or, or um, you're writing a screenplay, or you're composing a piece of music, is that the best you can do? Right? Don't ask me, don't say, okay, do you approve? Don't ask me, I'm not the musician, I'm not the composer, you know. Right? So the competitiveness is more from an individual perspective. Are you, is this the best you can do? 
And uh, if the answer is yes, then off we go. We talk about this often, and we always talk about the fact that you can learn a lot more from the failures than you can from the successes. And you have to figure out where those landmines are and then how to best avoid those or put or help entrepreneurs and ourselves included um, figure out the clues of where those landmines are. You know, not that you're going to avoid all of them. Right. Um, but it's also when you do step on one, figuring out, okay, how do you recuperate? How do you balance back and you know, pick yourself up? Dreams is, um, it should be pure. I, I think a lot of times you know, when we're born into this world, we actually wind up going backwards. And it seems like the more we mature, uh, the more responsible our dreams become. And the more governors we put on ourselves and our ability to dream and to reimagine. And it's always a fight for us parents and, you know, and for you guys to make sure that your dreams always stay pure. And so it's not a matter of, of, um, of pushing beyond the limitations or expectations. It's really a matter of protecting your dreams, protecting your imagination. That's really the key. And when you do that, then the world just seems limitless. Passion came from the love for the game. You know, I, I loved everything about it, like the smell of the ball. You love the smell of the ball? Yes, the ball. <laughs> you know, the smell of like brand new sneakers, and, like the sound the ball makes when it hits the ground. Yeah, and the ball going through the net, like all those things I, I love. And so the passion comes from that, because once you have that love, you just want to be a part of this thing all the time. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, uh, to be a sponge. You always want to outwork your potential. As hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. If your practices aren't more competitive than the games themselves, you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And most of these teams and coaches have gotten into a mindset of resting players. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a, too much. You know, we're not going to practice light day, light day, light day. Phil never gave us a light day. Mm -hmm. There's no days off. You show up and you work. Yeah. You practice. Yeah. And practices are going to be worse. They're yeah. going to be more physical. There's going to be more trash talking, and I'm going to let you know, right? Yeah. If you, you didn't show up today, I'm going to let you know. Yeah. And it's going to be embarrassing, and you're going to hate it. Um, but when game seven rolls around, the NBA finals, you will be prepared. Rolled my ankle really, really bad. I came back, finished the series, um, but I couldn't touch a basketball until mid-September, which was driving me crazy because I couldn't train. Mm -hmm. But I looked at this was like the 10th time I rolled my ankle in one season. So I'm looking at that and I'm saying, okay, I got to address that. And so be, being that I couldn't get on the basketball court, um, what I did was I took tap dancing lessons. <laughs> okay. No kidding. I took tap. And tap was like the best training for me in the world because it strengthened my feet. It changed my rhythm and my approach to the game. I was able to change speeds when I came back the following season. Um, and I think dancers um, put way more strain on their body than athletes do. And I think there's a lot that can be learned from that. My daughter took ballet for several years and I would sit there in the class, right? And I didn't know what I was getting into because I don't know anything about ballet, right? But I'm sitting there in the class and I'm watching her and I'm watching her get the first position, the second position. I'm, start, I'm learning the structure and the rules that go along with that. And as athletes, there's a lot to be learned from that. Because if you simply go out there and perform and play, yeah, you'll be great every now and then. But if you play with structure, if you understand the rules that come along with that, the discipline that comes along with that, then you reach another level. But you guys have my respect. If other people that don't see that, they're idiots. At 13 years old, I had a, um, <laughs> I had a kill list. And so, you know, they used to do these rankings, some Street and Smith basketball rankings. And I was nowhere to be found, because I was like 6'4", scrawny, like 160 pounds soaking wet. So I was like 57 on the list. And so I will look at 56, 55, all the way up to number one, who these players are, what club teams they played for. So when we go on an AAU travel circuit, I, I got to hunt them down, right? And so that became my mission in high school, is to check off every other person, all those 56 other names, hunt them down and knock them down. You know, the game is just a part of me. Um, so it never leaves. Even now that I'm retired, you know, I, I, everything that I've learned from the game of basketball, I've carried it over into life. Mm -hmm. You know, like basketball has helped me be a better person, a better friend, a better How father. So? Well, because there's life lessons that are within the game, mm -hmm. like communication, like unselfishness, um, like attention to detail, and um, 
empathy and compassion, like all those things are in the game. And uh, as an athlete, if we are aware of those things, um, it helps us become better human, human beings.